The first person you'll hear from when I finish is the woman that's to my right, Donna Logan. She is the president of the Canadian Media Research Consortium, one of the sponsors tonight, and founding director of the UBC School of Journalism. I should mention the other sponsors are the BC Press Council, the UBC School of Journalism, and the Network for Journalism Excellence. Uh, for Donna, prior to her time as being the founding director of the UBC Journalism School, she was a senior executive at my employer, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. She has worked in print journalism as well. And throughout her career, she has worked tirelessly, and I've seen this firsthand many times, to improve the standards and practices of journalism across the country. Recently, she and her team conducted research across Canada that discovered that only a third of Canadians think the news they receive is fair and balanced, and nearly one in three who check online news at least daily have stopped using a traditional media source because of loss of trust. Those are the kinds of issues we'll be talking about tonight. Here's Donna Logan. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. As you heard, um, our topic tonight is the future of news. How much control does the public have? Let me begin by telling you why we chose that title. Uh, back in 2003, we did a survey on what Canadians thought of their media. If you can believe it, it was the first public survey on this subject that had ever been conducted in this country. The survey showed that people's habits were changing in the way that they accessed news, and it also showed that there were serious concerns in Canada around the issues of credibility and trust. This year, we decided it was time to update that study and to find out whether attitudes had changed in five years. We felt certain that consumer habits of acquiring news were changing, fairly rapidly, and a lot of people were moving away from print and broadcast to the internet to keep up with the news. On the surface, news on the internet sounds great. You can access it any time of the day or night, no more waiting for that newspaper to drop on the doorstep or the broadcast time to arrive so you can find out what's happening. The other cool thing about news on the internet is that it's free. And what's even better, if you don't like the news you're getting, you can fire off your comments to the source, or you can start your own blog. It's often said that the internet is the great leveler in our society, that it allows the public to have more of a role in the process of news making. This means that you should be feeling that you have more power. But do you? I often marvel at how people la love to rant on about the press they are getting and how little they actually complain. I remember when I was in charge of national radio news and media accountability at CBC, wherever I went, people would complain to me about all kinds of programming. I always asked what they had done about it. What surprised me was that very few had sent an email complaining about whatever it was. So while the potential is there for more of a voice, not a huge number of people are taking advantage of the internet in that way. When you dig a little deeper on the subject of the internet, some disturbing questions begin to emerge. First, if more and more people are getting news online, are they using the sites of traditional news like the Vancouver Sun and Province, CBC, CTV, CNN, or The Globe? Or are they going to newer providers, such as Now Public, Michael's Pride and Joy, the TIE, produced here in Vancouver, the Huffington Post, or the Drudge Report? We were curious about that. We were also curious about this question, if newspapers, radio, and television are losing readers, listeners, and viewers to the internet, the providers are also losing revenue because advertising rates are tied to circulation. We wanted to know what the implications of that were. And then finally, we wanted to know if this trend uh, means fewer reporters because owners have to cut costs. 
Does this mean that the, a lower quality for the news product? And if so, will you, the public, care? Or will you be happy to get your news from the Huffington Post and now public? And if that happens, what are the implications for the role of a responsible, independent, and accountable media in a democratic society? Our survey didn't provide all the answers to these questions, but it did provide a good framework for uh, tonight's discussion. And it's our hope because of uh, tonight and the other similar events that Ian mentioned we're going to hold across the country, that we'll have a more complete picture of audience expectations. Although this is a public event, there are a good number of professional and student journalists here as well. And I want to say that we're equally anxious to hear uh, how you are reacting to the new environment. So what did we find in our survey? The first thing that we learned was that there is a general decline in interest in the news. This graph shows that about half of Canadian adults are very interested in the news, but and nearly 9 in 10 are somewhat interested. Unfortunately, only about one-third of those under 35 is very interested. Another, intrig uh, another intriguing finding that we uh, came up with is that younger Canadians are much more likely to check news sources from time to time than at the same time of day as older folks do. You can readily see that the long traditional practice of picking up a newspaper at the front door and reading it over breakfast each morning is losing ground. The next thing we wanted to know was how people perceived the news they were getting from print, broadcast, and radio. We used five different measures to determine how people felt. These included accuracy, fairness and balance, bias, independence of news organizations, and independence of journalists. The next few charts that you're going to see um, go over the highlights of what we discovered. Unfortunately, there's just not time for me to go through them all in detail, but I'll show you a few results and then summarize. This chart shows that perceptions of accuracy over the last five years have declined by seven percentage points, and that's significant. It also shows that nearly half of news consumers think that news often fails to get their facts straight. And get this, two-thirds of Canadians believe that the news media cover up their mistakes. Look what happened when we asked the public questions about fairness and balance. Only one in three Canadians thinks that the news they're getting is usually fair and balanced. A majority agrees that political bias is common in the news. Yikes. This is scary stuff if you're a reporter or an editor or a media owner. But it is what you, the public, perceives. In fact, with all the five measures we used, accuracy, fairness and balance, bias, independence of media organizations and independence of journalists, the trend was the same downward. So although it's obvious that people still see traditional media as an important source of information, there clearly is a decline in uh, usage of this, uh, of this media. It's been common to assume that people are making this shift away from print and broadcast to the Internet because of ease of access, and you don't have to pay for it. However, we discovered in this study that there are these are not the only things driving people to the net. This chart shows uh, that people are defecting because of lack of faith and trust in print and broadcast. 